Hey guys, how's it going? This is Wodge, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put on Mac OS X Mavericks on your PC-based hardware. So this video is good for anybody who already has a existing Hackintosh computer or PC that's running Mac OS X and wants to update from Lion, Snow Leopard, or Mountain Lion to Mavericks, or for anybody who's actually building a PC from scratch and wants to put in Mavericks inside that PC instead of Windows for whatever reason. So therefore stay tuned. Now if you're doing this for the first time and you're actually building a PC from scratch, I would highly recommend you watching my video of me actually building a custom Hackintosh from scratch using some of the recommended parts that a lot of people use and work really well with Mac OS X where you don't even have to worry about too many drivers. So definitely check that video out if you haven't already. We'll have a link of that video in the description below and you can also click the screen right now to watch that. And I also have a more in-depth uh, installation process of how to install Mac OS X and you can click on that video as well. But again, this specific video is going to be for anybody looking to specifically install Mavericks on their existing Mac OS X install or from scratch. In both cases, it is pretty much the same application. So without any further ado, let's get right into installing Mac OS X Mavericks on our PC. Okay everyone, so the first step is to make sure that we have everything we need to get everything up and running. So the first thing is that we need to have a computer that is able to run Mac OS X without too many issues. So if you're building a custom PC like I have, just make sure all the parts are decently compatible without too many driver supports. So I'm using a Gigabyte motherboard, an Intel processor, and again, you'll see my parts list in the description. Now, if you already have a built PC or an existing computer that you wanna install Mac OS X onto, you basically want to make sure that you're running a newer Intel processor such as an i3, i5, i7 and it could be different chipsets. Uh, just go ahead and do your research and unfortunately AMD is not really that well supported. You can try different means but this tutorial specifically for Intel processors and in terms of motherboard again go do your research see if the current motherboard that you have works decently with Mac OS X. You'll find pretty quickly if it does or not because a lot of people have tried installing Mac OS X on different types of hardware. Secondly, we're going to need a computer that is already running Mac OS X, Snow Leopard at least. So that could be a legitimate MacBook Pro or Mac Pro or whatever computer from Apple that's running Mac OS X or it could be a Hackintosh. Let's say if you already have a Hackintosh that's running Mountain Lion or something like that, you can actually do this process as an upgrade and keep your files and not have to start over again. So there is an upgrade path. And again, I'll mention which step you take to just do an update instead of a clean install. Now, the third thing that you'll need in terms of hardware is a USB drive, at least eight gigs or larger. You can use USB 3.0 if you wish. It can also be USB 2.0, but as long as it's eight gigs, you should be fine. Okay, so once we have all the hardware we need, we wanna go on to our computer that's running at least Mountain Lion 10.6.8 or later, and that could be any computer, like I mentioned again, and you wanna go onto the Mac App Store, log into your ID, and download the free version of Mavericks, which is awesome that it's free right now. So we're going to go ahead and download Mavericks. And while it's downloaded, we're going to go to TonyMaxx86.com. And if you haven't created a user account, definitely do that. This is the main source that I use for all my Hackintosh needs. And uh, go ahead and log into your user ID in TonyMaxx86.com. So the first thing that we're going to need to download is the latest version of UniBeast. But this is going to allow us to basically create our bootable Mavericks thumb drive. Next, we're going to go ahead and go back to the download page and download MultiBeast 6.0 for Mavericks. And I go ahead and download that. And while that's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and get our custom DSDT for your specific motherboard. So you're just gonna go over to the Downloads tab and click on DSDT, and there you can choose your specific brand motherboard and find your specific motherboard and download that DSDT file. Okay, so once we have everything downloaded, you just wanna go ahead and drag all your downloads to your desktop. And we're just gonna go ahead and rename this DSDT file, just DSDT so MultiBeast can do its thing later on. Next, we want to pop in our USB drive, make sure it's eight gigs or larger, and then we go back onto the desktop and search for 
disk utility. And once you're in disk utility, you want to click on to the USB drive that we just inserted and uh, go into the partitions tab, uh, create one partition, go into the options and make sure your selected master boot record. And we're going to go ahead and rename this just any generic name. We'll say USB, for example. And we want to make sure we're formatting in Mac OS 10 extended journal. And uh, we're going to go ahead and apply. All right. Now, once we're done this, our USB drive is now ready to become a bootable device. Next, we want to do is take our DSDD file and our multi-piece file and put it on a external drive or maybe email it to yourself. Basically, we want this ready for the new machine. If you're going to reinstall Mac OS 10 on a fresh machine, you want to have these on hand. So, so we'll just drag these two files on our external hard drive over here. Okay, so our final step is to open up UniBeast and we're going to go ahead and hit continue and continue again and just go ahead and agree. And we're going to go ahead and select our USB thumb drive that we just partitioned and we're going to just hit continue there and click on the Mavericks right there and make sure again it's fully downloaded. It should uh, just allow you to continue forth and it's going to ask you for your password. And uh, you could just go ahead and enter the password. And this is going to take a little bit of time. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes to get this completed. This is basically doing a lot of stuff. It's putting in your bootloader. It's making sure that Mavericks is easy to boot straight off the USB without any troubles. And if you have the supported hardware, it should just boot off straight off the bat, whether you're doing an upgrade in an existing Hackintosh or a brand new install. So now Unibis has completed making our USB Mavericks thumb drive. And now we can take this USB and insert it to our free USB drives on our PC that we're gonna install Mavericks on. So we're gonna go ahead and Turn on our computer and press the hotkey to choose which device you want to boot from. If you're using a Gigabyte motherboard, you use F12. If you're using an Asus motherboard, you press F8. So I have a Gigabyte. I'm going to press F12. And there you have our uh, drives that we can select from. We want to select our USB drive, which is our A data drive. And once we select the USB, you'll see the bootloader over here. And we can go ahead and press enter and start installing Mac OS X. It'll start loading up everything thing it needs to do. Now I had no problems getting into the installation page based on my Gigabyte motherboard that I have, but if you have any issues, you can type in dash X on the bootloader screen, which is going to allow you to boot into safe mode, which most of the time will get you at least into the installer page. Now, once you make it to the installer screen, you want to go ahead and select your primary language. Now for a new install of Mac OS 10, you must erase and format the destination drive according to the steps that I'm going to take. But if you want to actually just upgrade from Snow Leopard, Lion, or Mountain Lion that you currently already have installed, you just want to go ahead and click next and just install um, Mavericks just usually and you won't lose any of your data. Now, but what I'm going to be doing is we're going to go up to utilities, go into disk utilities, and here I'm going to go into the partition tab. I'm going to choose to add one partition. Then we're going to click on options and we're going to choose Choose GUID partition method and we're going to just go ahead and name this drive Mavericks. You can rename it later if you wish and we're going to choose to format in Mac OS 10 extended journal and we're going to go ahead and apply that and it's going to go ahead and format and partition our hard drive. We're just going to go ahead and close the utility now and uh, we're going to continue forth and select our hard drive that we just formatted. This is actually an SSD drive drive that we're formatting. So it should be pretty fast in installing our Mac OS 10 Mavericks. And uh, this is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes based on the speed of your drive. And once it's done, it's going to actually automatically restart your computer. And once it does restart, it should boot into your USB drive, which has the bootloader. If it gives you an error, just make sure you're booting into that USB drive and you should be at the bootloader page where we can select our Mavericks. And once you press enter on Mavericks, it's going to start booting up Mac OS 10 for the first time running Mavericks. And uh, this might take a little bit of while because it is building up all the kegs for the first time. So just give it some time. If you get any errors again, uh, you can type in a dash X on the bootloader screen uh, and that will get you into the safe mode. But here we had no problems getting into our Mac OS 10 install. And we're just going to go through these initial steps and connect to our network and things like that. And uh, you 
shouldn't ha have any problems getting to the desktop because once you're at the desktop, I offloaded my MultiBeast and my DSDT file from my external drive and put it on our desktop as you see over here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our MultiBeast and we're going to go into the quick start and we're going to select our user DSDT file. We're going to just locate it on the desktop and open that up. Then we're going to select our different drivers that we're going to install. So I'm definitely going to install my audio drivers. And uh, again, this will be dependent upon your motherboard. So uh, do some research in terms of what drivers are specific to your motherboard. And uh, do a couple of just modifications here and there. Again, with the multi-beast, it's really trial and error what specifically motherboard is catered towards which specific drivers. In most cases, this motherboard that I'm using, I really don't need to do anything but actually put in my bootloader and everything kind of works. The uh, sound, the networking, everything works really, but uh, we just we want to make sure we have our bootloader selected. So I'm just using uh, that latest one and uh, you can select uh, different aspects of the bootloader itself if you want to add different themes and things like that. I tend to keep things a little bit basic because I don't want to run into any errors later on and we can even add in our definitions of our Mac Pro if you wish. So next we're going to go ahead and install this. We're going to agree to the agreement over here. You can also donate to Tony Max 86 which is uh, recommended if you want. They're really a great uh, resource of making this so easy especially if you pick the right stuff. Put in your password and it's going to start installing all your drivers and the bootloader and everything. And once that's done, go ahead and restart your computer and you shouldn't have any problems. I didn't come across any problems based on my hardware. And there you have it. You have Mac OS X Mavericks running on your custom built PC. And the really awesome thing about Mavericks is that it utilizes everything about your hardware. So it actually gives you more virtual system memory. So four gigs acts like six gigs in the OS. It's also a lot more power efficient. It's going to use OpenCL a lot better as well. So if you have an AMD graphics card that's supported right now, it's just the 7000 series graphics cards. I'm actually using a GTX 760 for my graphics and it works straight off the bat with no drivers. I could even plug in three monitors as you see over here. And there's a lot of cool things about Mavericks when you're using multiple monitors everything is basically its own primary display if you wanted to so whatever display you're working at you'll get your own dock and uh, if you go full screen it, your other monitors won't really be affected with it it's really independent very smart and uh, the launch control system is excellent for multi monitors as well hopefully we'll see some more gaming and other kind of uh, spanning support so if you want to use one application across all three monitors uh, it'll be better you can do it to some extent right now but uh, there'll be updates and with those uh, combo updates that you can always download on a hackintosh uh, all those things are going to be available to you in the future but on that guys if you have any questions about anything i talked about in this video please make sure to leave that on a comment down below it's a fairly straightforward process installing mac os 10 on your pc i've done like three tutorials thus far and uh, I would like to say that it is smooth and in a lot of cases, once you do it, you have a good knack for it. But if you get stuck in really either step and you can't boot into your system, uh, just go ahead and try those uh, little modifications that I talked about in this video by hitting dash X to go into safe mode and you should get into Mac OS X. A lot of times for some reason, there's weird little errors that you can't really predict. And if you completely messed up, the beauty of all these installations, you just, just start from scratch over and you'll eventually get it running and as long as you're running the proper parts that other people have used like the gigabyte motherboards for example and uh, the proper graphics cards and things like that and you've done your a little bit of research into the components you should be fine in terms of the software side for the most part but again guys the best advice that I can probably give anybody doing this is have patience do a little bit of research yourself use this as kind of a kind of a quick guide in a video form of what Tony Mac 86 is blog has done for years I mean those guys are amazing that website is absolutely fantastic I'm pretty much just copying exactly what their steps are on their web page and we'll of course have a link to that direct web page as well so you can have 
that resource as well. But lastly, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube page, Majid Sayyid 2, definitely check that out. We have a lot of cool stuff on there and we're continuously uploading videos on comparisons and different reviews and unboxings and hopefully more tutorials. And uh, definitely check that out if you haven't already. And follow me on Twitter if you haven't. Uh, I tweet once in a while too about different tech stuff. And uh, we'll see you later. Take care.